Installing wire rope clip assemblies may seem self-evident, but if they're done improperly, they can lose up to 40% of their strength. On the other hand, a properly installed wire rope clip assembly can have 80% of the published breaking strength of the wire rope you're using, and that number jumps to 90% with wire ropes over one inch. First, the wire rope clips. There are forged wire rope clips which can carry more weight than the equivalent malleable wire rope clips. The wire rope clips come in two styles, single saddle wire rope clips and the easier to use double saddle wire rope clips. Before we start working with the wire rope, we want to make sure there aren't any frayed wire ends. Find the point before the fray. Wrap the wire rope with a heavy duty tape. If you're working with a thicker wire rope, you may need to wrap the end with a thin, soft wire. Cut the wire just after the wire wrap. Turnback length is the amount of wire rope that's turned back after you make the loop. Look at the manufacturer's chart for the appropriate wire rope clip you're using. I'm not sure of the application, so I'm going to use a forged wire rope clip. In this case, I'm using quarter inch wire rope so I'll need a quarter inch wire rope clip. I need four and three quarters inches turn back length. I'm going to mark that off on the wire rope. For the loop, I'm going to use a thimble. A thimble is good insurance against abrading or getting a kink in the wire rope. The mark for your turn back should be placed at the end of the thimble. When installing wire rope clips, remember, you don't saddle a dead horse. Place the saddle on the long end of the rope, not the dead end of the rope. Earlier, we talked about double saddle wire rope clips. With these wire rope clips, it doesn't matter which way you attach them to the wire rope. If safety or convenience is important, double saddle wire rope clips can be an excellent choice. Add the first wire rope clip, one saddle length away from the end of the rope. Use a torque wrench so you don't crimp the wire or break the wire rope clip. Just like the turn back information, the torque information is available from the manufacturer. Move back and forth from nut to nut to keep the tension even. The second wire rope clip will go snug against the wire rope thimble. Remove any slack, saddle on the live end of the rope, tighten evenly between the two nuts. If you need three or more wire rope clips, make sure that they are evenly spaced apart. There you have it an assembled wire rope loop ready for testing. When you use your wire rope loop, remember, don't use the loop for overhead lifting applications or lifting slings. If you're using vinyl covered wire rope, the first thing to think about is the diameter of the wire rope after the vinyl has been removed. In this case, I'm using quarter inch vinyl covered wire rope. When the vinyl is stripped away, the rope is 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. So I'll be using 3 16 inch wire rope clips. Regarding how much vinyl to strip away, first find and measure the turn back length for a 3 16 diameter wire rope. Assemble the wire rope with the thimble and mark where the dead end of the rope meets the live end. Strip the wire rope from the live end mark to the end of the rope and assemble as you normally would. After you've completed your wire rope assembly, you're not done apply a test load to the assembly. The test load should be equal to or greater than the load that the assembly will be subjected to. After testing, inspect and retighten the nuts to the recommended torque value. You should also continue to occasionally inspect the assembly for wear, abuse, and fatigue. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact your local Kimball Midwest representative.